Surprise, surprise, Jake Paul just stirred up some controversy at the recent promotion event for his brother's fight against Floyd Mayweather. Hey, 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 hey. Let me call Al I'm my own boss. I'm my own boss. One night, got your hat. Oh. Jake has about as much class as the pickup lines used on Hooters waitresses near the end of the night. He's so involved in controversy that finding out he listens to Nickelback wouldn't even be newsworthy. Flo, do you really want to take them both on at the same night? Both Absolutely brothers? easy. You got two fake fighters. A fake fight. I'm a real fighter. The fighting world is having a meltdown with Jake Paul wanting to become a legitimate boxer. His older brother Logan, sporting a 0-1-1 record, has superseded the traditional route of earning your way to the top by beating every challenger in your weight class by just skipping all these steps and jumping into the ring with the greatest. Dana White, UFC fans, and boxing fans are all perplexed how these brothers are earning respect as fighters when they're not even real fighters. Why is this happening and why haven't they been stopped? And boomers are wondering why these YouTubers are always in the news. What's a YouTube? In this video, let's quickly discuss why they make so much money, how much money they make, and why they are becoming boxers. Jake Paul has over 20 million subscribers on YouTube. Logan, 23 million. Jake has 15.5 million followers on Instagram. Logan, 19 million. These two attract more attention than Riff Raff walking into a Mormon wedding. Between their YouTube content, Instagram posts, the Impulsive Podcast, and Jake Paul's tweets, the Paul brothers create news. Here in 2021, attention is arguably the greatest currency. Like, how do I get people to understand how big of a deal this is? Like, nothing is more valuable than attention. It's the only, I literally value attention equal to oxygen. This may sound a little bit extreme, Gary, but he does have a point. Why is attention so important? because of advertising and commerce. Advertisers rely on the attention of consumers in order to pay content creators, whether it's AdSense from YouTube ads, sponsored posts on Instagram, or affiliate marketing by promoting another brand's products. Creators rely on attention to generate income. The Paul brothers generate as much attention as anyone else on the social media platforms. In just a minute, we'll discuss how much they're actually making, but the root of their income is based on getting you to watch them. Yeah. Yes, the amount of times my like PR team or like, my review guy, Jed, shout out Jed, have been like, well, there's never a dull moment. I'm like, yeah, I wish there was. Yeah. Say, I, there was once. It was, a, it was a Tuesday. There was a dull moment on a Tuesday. <laughs> that, one was time. One yeah, time that was it. One time in how many years? 10 years? Yeah. This is the pivotal thing to understand about creators. You may hate the Paul brothers. You may comment on their news posts. Why are these two clowns still relevant? Won't they just go away? Or you may watch their YouTube videos, downvote it, and let them know just how awful society is to let these two brothers exist in the comment section. A lot of people just don't seem to understand that attention is their way of winning. If you're watching Jake act like a clown on YouTube, he won. If you engage with his content and hate watch it, he won. Controversy creates drama, drama creates clicks, and clicks lead to sales and ad revenue. I'm not a boxer. Dana White betting against me, he's gonna chicken out of the bet, but tonight. This video on Instagram has 4.1 million views. In a recent video, I used a clip from Colin and Samir's interview with Ian from SeatGeek about how much to expect with brand sponsorships. Let's assume the $20 CPM that was stated in that video. For 4.1 million views, Jake would earn $80, $2,000 for that single video. My guess is he actually commands more. Let me repeat for you to understand. 4 million views, at least $20 per 1,000 views, $82,000 for about 30 seconds of work. That's such a ridiculous cost to DraftKings. Why would they do that? If DraftKings knows that every customer averages, let's say $100 of revenue for the company, then all they need is 820 people out of 4.1 million to start using their service. This is why influencer and brand sponsorships can be so strong and why people everyone seems to hate, like Jake Paul, can make so much money. Logan had brand deals inked with Toyota, Mitsubishi, and Sony, but they all couldn't see the forest from the trees that his audience would have been perfect for their brand. Logan releases a lot of content, but they must have thought he would leave them hanging after signing the contract. With no brands wanting to sponsor Logan for years following the Japan incident, he decided to create his own monthly membership fan club called the Maverick Club. Aimed at his biggest fans, the Maverick Club was Logan's way of monetizing his brand by offering extra content, discounts on merchandise, and cool giveaways. One of his giveaways was his infamous yellow Dodge Charger. Another benefit is being included in the $10,000 cash giveaway every month. 
month. If you watch my channel and you hear that cars and $10,000 cash is being given away, then you know the creator is somehow making 10X that. Logan posted on IG that every single member of the Maverick Club would be receiving this NFT of him that looks like his own Pokemon card. If we look at this source for the NFT, we can see that nearly 7,000 people received the NFT. Let's assume there are around 7,000 Maverick Club members. Membership costs $20 a month, so that would be $140,000 of revenue every single month. Three days ago, I sold a million dollars in merch in one day, in that one day. Yeah, bro, like, he's like, you really made it. I was like, no, wait, you know what's even crazier? He's like, yeah, I was like, I did the same thing the next day. And I was like, let me, let me stop you there. I did the same thing the day after that. $1 million revenue days back to back to back with his merch. Unfortunately, there's no way of knowing how much Logan makes from merchandise sales, but this gives us a general idea. The three days he was talking about were the e-commerce goldmine days surrounding Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Since sales generally explode during that weekend, let's assume his sales were 4x what they are for every month. I wouldn't be surprised if his monthly merchandise sales are around $750,000. His warehouse is massive, so I know he's doing serious volume with his merchandising. Let's take a completely uneducated guess and estimate he's generating eight to $10 million every year from Maverick Clothing. I don't think that number is unattainable. 10% profit margins would put him around a milli a year in net profit. Jake also has his own merchandising. Whatever the real number is for both of them, know that it's seven figures. You don't buy the houses they buy without earning serious dough. That's, that's see, that's the problem. My, my monthly expenses are like, I don't even know if I can say this, bro. Like, I, quarter million dollars a month. <laughs> it's honestly a lot of like uh, payroll and just actual regular expenses shit. I just have like, a lot of people working for me. I have a lot of moving pieces. Logan is spending $3 million a year just on the personal brand business he operates. If he's spending $3 million per year and lives the life he does, imagine how much he's making. Why would two YouTubers start boxing? We're also gonna cover the real reason why the fighting community is hating on these two. Number one, these two brothers have always been aware of how to gain attention through their content and controversy. Boxing marked the revival period for Logan with his fights against KSI, and for Jake, Boxing created great content for his fight against Anise and Gibb. Boxing provides anticipation, buildup, and months of content before the actual fight. A lot of trash talking and drama happens before fights as well, which keeps their name in the news constantly. Number two, obviously the money. Jake Paul earned $690,000 for fighting Ben Askren, plus pay-per-view points. Depending on the contract, Jake could have, and likely earned, multiple millions of dollars out of the $65 million or so the fight allegedly generated. Logan is about to fight Floyd Mayweather and will earn probably $10 million. Is that what we're talking about? We're talking about $100 million? Is that, are those the type of numbers we're I, talking I'd about? Like to, I'd like to gross, I'd like to gross $100 million. Obviously I wouldn't be making $100 million. Can you walk away with $20 million doing this fight? I could. I could, yeah. Number three, both brothers are always pushing forward to something new. Vine, YouTube, daily vlogs, merch, monthly memberships, NFTs, Pokemon cards, boxing. They're always looking for ways to monetize their brand, and what better way than to fight famous athletes? In situations like this, you always have two sides, the purists and the people who want to be entertained. It can be good if boxing people embrace the extra eyeballs that are going to be on the sport. People who are complaining, oh, it you know devalues and it turns it into a sideshow boxing's already marginalized purists always want people to follow unwritten rules and to do things the way they've always been done others just want interesting is there drama are there cool storylines is it interesting enough to watch you saw this recently with tim tebow playing baseball in the minor leagues he hadn't played baseball since high school but because he was well known he was given a chance in the minor leagues over someone more deserving the purists would say it's interesting yeah. it's gonna see how long it takes before this kid's 15. <laughs> UFC purists, of course, stick to the mantra that Jake isn't really a fighter. This is the purest way of gatekeeping what real fighting really is. Because UFC fans see the traditional path of earning your stripes across many disciplines and then beating quality opponents over years before being able to label yourself a professional fighter. They see some YouTuber beat up a couple scrubs who can't strike and call himself a great fighter, and of course they get heated. We all know Jake isn't a good UFC fighter, but he antagonizes the UFC world by calling out their favorite and best fighters. UFC purists hate Jake, 
Boxing purists hate the brothers because they don't follow their traditional path of beating real boxers on their way to the top. They just showed up, fought a couple times, and are now making significantly more money than most of the best legitimate boxers. At the end of the day, boxing and UFC are entertainment. Floyd Mayweather figured this out years ago and why he's earned hundreds of millions of dollars. Make people think you're the villain and profit when they purchase pay-per-views just to see you lose. Now we talk about a Logan Paul, a YouTuber for a hundred mil, give me that. Jake and Logan fighting is interesting. People can say they hate him. Boxing purists can say it's ruining the sport of boxing as if boxing is some elaborate piece of China that hasn't been touched since the Han Dynasty. Interesting brings attention. Attention means eyeballs. Eyeballs and clicks drive sales and ad revenue. Look at people's behavior, not their words. Floyd Mayweather sold millions of pay-per-views each fight because people wanted to see him get beat. The same will happen with the Paul brothers. With all three, they will make millions win or lose. Logan hasn't won a boxing match and is about to make eight figures boxing the best of his generation. They get your attention whether you like them or hate them, and that's ultimately why they make millions of dollars every year. Just admit that you're at least a little curious if Jake Paul can beat real boxers and if Logan can actually land a punch on Floyd. I am. Thanks for watching.